Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well out there in Zoom land. Um, again, this is a good day that we're all here to assemble and, and pray that we learn something today in God's word. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to, to make it through another day. We pray, Lord, that you touch our hearts and put us in position where we can receive. Lord, we, we pray that you whatever distractions that we got going on, whether known or unknown, that you wipe them away from us, that you just allow us to focus on your word and spirit and truth. And Lord, we know that in some respects, we know what your words say, but God, we just pray that you give us a heart of understanding and a heart to be able to carry out what your word says. We thank you for today. We thank you for the members that are on the Zoom. We thank you for those who had desire but could not be here. We pray, Lord, for those who are absent. We pray for those who are in, in who are shut in, who can't be here. We just pray, Lord, that you just continue to guide and touch them. This, Lord, and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the word resurrects. Um, the word resurrects in that we've, we've heard this before, starting in the very first uh, lesson, when uh, I want to say Dr. Grace talked about a lot of it, uh, when she talked about uh, Jesus being the word, Jesus being the light. And we're just going to reflect on the word resurrecting uh, Lazarus in particular, because that's who's one of the main characters of the of the story, if you will. Next slide. OK, just like with all the other lessons, for those who, depending on how you're coming in, whether it's star nine, if you want to raise your hand and communicate and you uh, have something you have to say, if you have questions, or if you're using your computer, uh, go down to participants in the far right and just uh, raise your hand or hit, hit the chat feature, and then you can go from there. Um, one of the first questions I want to pose is uh, as we look at the outline, as we look at the outline, we're going to talk about I am. And Jesus often said that I am. And the lesson even talks about there are seven. Uh, just to think on it as we go through. Can some of y'all name some of the I am's starting off? Some of these should be like automatic, but uh, there was a couple I even had to go back and research myself. You see them, but you don't hear them off them as often. So name those as we go through. Again, we're gonna take a look at the, uh, the scriptures we're gonna read. Yeah, go back, there you go. Go back to the, there, there you go, he's there. Resurrection, okay. Who else? That's what we're going to be studying today. We're going to be talking about the resurrection. I am the truth, okay. Who else? That's two. The light, that's three. Okay, four more. Life, yes, ma'am. Okay. The first and the last, the way, okay. You said one. My wife over there mumbling, so I'm gonna say what y'all she said. She said the vine. That's number six. So it's one more out there. I am that I am. Okay. It's one more that y'all ain't said. One more. I am the door. The door. So that's seven. So everybody got those seven, right? Okay, again, uh, as we go through these scriptures, we, uh, the word resurrects, we, we're going to primarily be talking out of John, the entire chapter 11, even though we've broken down 17 through 27 and 38 through 34 or 44. Yep, I am the bread of life. Yep. Okay, we're going to take a look deeper into it, and then we're going to summarize, and, we, and then we're going to close the lesson out. Next slide, bro. Okay, who are some of the main characters? We're going to talk about those. What is the resurrection? The importance of the I am. We already hit that one, but we're going to come back to it because, again, that's very important to the context of the entire lesson. Martha's belief and what motivated her and why is belief and faith in Jesus important then as then and now? Okay, next slide. 11. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. 
This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But, Rabbi, they said, A short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high 
stop it. He prophesied that Jesus. Okay. You can go to the next slide. Sure. Okay. We just heard an overview of uh, John 11 and what happened. And the, the narrator, we, he went a little further, but he also tells us what's really to come in chapter 12 and 13 and, and so forth. But again, uh, this is just a prelim of what's to come. And you got to remember going up, going back. Prior, if we if we walk back, if you will, uh, Jesus had already been telling us who he was. I am the word. In the beginning, I'm the word and I'm life. That's what we heard in the very beginning of it. Uh, so he, he really told us who he was. Now he's starting to show us and we really seeing it in the lesson uh, with Lazarus in, in regards to the resurrection. Uh, John's gospel is unique among the four gospel. It records much of Jesus ministry in Judea and Jerusalem. Now, Jesus' ministry was what? Teaching, preaching, and healing. That's what he did. And so everywhere he went, he had the crowds, and he also had disciples that was with them. The author is John, and is a member of Jesus' inner circle, which is Peter, James, and John. And if you look at it, too, if you go back, even in, with Jesus' uh, ultimate betrayal, you got to look at where it starts. It starts within the within the, the the, the disciples, the main disciples, but also within the smaller circles of the disciples, which is the three. Today, we will emphasize again the focus on the principles of the resurrection word and resurrection in particular with regards to Lazarus. Next slide. Okay, the purpose in writing the book is that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, which we've already heard the son of God, and that you may have life in, in the names, in Jesus' name, that is. The focus is on what you might believe and that you will go on believing. You are the, <clears throat> the, the message is intended for the saved who believe and the unsaved to come to believe. And as we've already discussed, uh, it talks about the I am's, which is seven versions of that, I am. And he's telling you that in the book of, of, of John itself. So it's for the saved but he's also trying to reach the unsaved so again everything that jesus did was to bring glory to the father and as we study this this particular chapter he's we get to see the manifestation of the glory of god when he bring lazarus back from the dead okay as we dive deeper into that next slide before we get into the uh the reading again we're gonna go through again and break it down are there any questions thus far on the lesson thus far? Any questions or comments from anybody? If not, we'll keep moving. Okay. Okay, nothing hurt. Okay, Sister Brown, you on the net? Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Good morning. I'll be reading uh, scripture verse chapter 11, John verses 17 through 24. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Next slide, continue on. Go ahead. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. 
Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right, next slide. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Everything that, thank you, Ms. Brown, for reading the scriptures for us. And we're seeing it again, as we've, we've, we've heard it a couple of times, they let the words themselves. And we talk about in the beginning, as we talked about was the word and Jesus being the word. The main characters in this entire lesson are who? Mary, Martha, Lazarus, the Jews, and Jesus. And resurrect itself means to bring alive or to revive. So as Jesus, what? He was away, Lazarus is in the tomb. Now Jesus is coming and his sister, uh, Martha, is waiting for him, right? So as we wait, now Jesus mentioned, she finally eventually sees him and mentions that he's not dead. And so once it occurs that he's there, he says, what, remove the tomb. I'm gonna show you that he's not dead. But ultimately the purpose of that is to bring glory to the father through the son, which is Jesus Christ. That's the intent of the whole lesson there. Now, it also foreshadows what? The events that are to happen to him. Right. So as we read further and as in, in, diff, in further lessons, we're Jesus is going about to experience the same thing. But as we see again, he's reminding us, I am the resurrection and the life. So we're going to let all this stuff occur. We're going to let all this happen. And then I'm going to show y'all that I'm the resurrection and the life. I already told y'all in chapter one that I am the word in the word was the uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. And who's that? Jesus Christ. He is the focus, or should be. And without him, there's what? No life. So again, up until this point, really, the entire lesson is centered on the fact that he is showing or about to manifest, manifest the glory of the Lord, the glory of God himself through the events that's occurring through Lazarus and also through Mary and Martha. Now, Martha as we know, and as we will continue to see in this lesson, what? She had to be shown. She had, it had to be sort of proved to her that he is who he is. She knew, but she also was convinced that he would, what? Well, that he could have uh, prevented his brother from dying. But again, we all know that this had to occur. Next slide. Okay, for you all now. Why was Martha so motivated to have, to have Jesus raise her brother? And can we learn from her? What motivated her and why was she so motivated? What drove Martha here? Because there were doubters all throughout. You had some that believed him and you had some that don't. But in Martha's mind, she never doubted. Why? Anybody? I wonder type and answer is Brother Lot. I think one reason why, because she has spent so much time with Jesus. So that's why, you know, when we spend time with him, we know who he is, then you don't have to doubt. So I think that's some of the reasons why, too. Okay. All right. That'll work. And she, she was just determined. I mean, uh, we've all have sort of been there when uh, it was something that we knew in our hearts that was going to occur. And we knew 
that we had to stand on that faith and, and regardless of what was going on around us and who was saying it, because there are always going to be people around you that's going to that's going to question what you believe. And only you can answer that for yourself. And, and from my observation of it, she knew that Jesus was the Messiah. She knew that Jesus could do what was what what was said that he could do. And regardless of that, was nothing going to shake her. OK, and you dig it. There's something that did come in the chat. Someone said her faith in Jesus and love of her brother. OK. Faith. Yep. So what is faith that we've studied many, many times? What is it? Okay, move on to the next one. Okay, it just goes into what I just asked. Explain what it means to have faith and how does, how does believing contribute to this? We're walking and living in some, some turbulent, turbulent, troubling times today. We've got a lot of things going on around us. And why is it so important for us to walk in faith and to have faith? And we have some people putting in the chat. Someone said belief and hope in the unseen. Okay. Gotcha. I'm looking at pictures. People are really in deep thought. I think you asked some hard questions this morning. Take well, a look at the on back to you. But that's, but that's good, though. I mean, uh, the, the, the purpose, again, is to, to get everybody thinking. Uh, these lessons, ultimately, and they even preparing for these lessons, we've heard these lessons many, many times, especially as often as we teach and go through Sunday school. Um, but again, they're good reminders of what we should be living, not just studying week after week, but also live it and, and, and displaying it and walking in it. So faith, as we know, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So as was said just in the last uh, response from Mr. Brown, we can't see it, but we know it's there. But ultimately, uh, going back to the I am's, Jesus is the ultimate where we should be putting our faith and trust in anyway. We should be putting it all in him. So to go back to, to, to what I asked in particular, especially with all the things that are going on, we need to be uh, studying, focusing on him, getting into his word, praying, allow him to be the light in our life, and then he can manifest himself through us as he did uh, with the resurrection of Lazarus. So again, as we walk, we should be walking in the light and not darkness. And the word also tells us as we walk in darkness, there's no there is no light. He can't walk in and be in us and we walk, walk in darkness too. We either one or the other. So that's why it's so very important to walk by faith and not by sight and to stand by faith and to believe in the Lord and to believe in scripture and to come and to show ourselves approved by studying and getting into his word and meditating his word and letting the spirit of God direct and guide us accordingly. Okay, next slide. All right, now we, 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 we've gone from belief, we've gone from individual, individuals, now we're gonna talk about the church, which we hear. How does the church exercise faith in the world filled with so much unbelief? So that's three. We hear this often a lot. My church this, my church that. Well, how does the church exercise faith in a world that's turbulent and filled with nothing but unbelief? And we hear nothing but the word of God, the messages of God, the principles of God. How does the church stand and exercise faith there? How does the church show and display the resurrected life that the word of God tells us about in, a, in the essence of an of a unsaved world, unsaved dying world. How do we do it? Well, while people are typing, um, Brother Locke, you know, one of the things you have to think about is that 
you know, we, we have a history as a church of God overcoming situations. Like you look all throughout the Bible. So we just make sure we tell the story and tell our testimony because people, sometimes they only see the, I guess I hate to say it, they see the end goal, but they don't see the struggle that got to the end goal. And so many times we have to make sure that we're testifying and telling of the story about how the Lord can bring us over. Um, if you don't tell that story, then yeah, the world won't believe because they have nothing to base their, uh, their hope on. Amen to that. And it, again, oh, go ahead. You got you got some some words. Yeah, and Sister Braxton has her hand up. I'm gonna unmute her. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, since we are, since we are the church, it is a, it's incumbent upon us to manifest what God has told us. And if we are doing what He has told us, that's a positive spin on the church. And the church can, you know, like I said before, the church, we are the church. And what we do reflect, what we do must reflect what God has told us to do. Amen. 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 And there are some chats in the um, chat, Brother Lot, too. So we have people have put in here. Continue to give testimony about the goodness of the Lord. And I agree, talk about the struggle. And as someone else said, to be consistent in sharing the word of God to people and to share the love of God for them through various ways to outreach to them and tangibly demonstrate God's love for them. All right, then we have Amen. another hand up. Another hand, go ahead. Good morning. Um, I'm gonna piggyback on what Sister Brightson has said. Um, in our various um, positions, whether we're at work or wherever we are in our marketplace, um, when others are appearing to be despondent or say they're going, um, say they're going to the left, in our individual places, we should stand out because we'll always be operating on faith. So when people are going to the left, we're going to be going in the opposite direction, and that will in turn show people um, because we stand out people will start wondering well i'm over here pulling my hair out why is she sitting over there um looking like nothing's going on it kind of reminds me of um, jonah on the um when he was when he was on the i mean christ when he was on the ship and all everybody was running around wondering and saying asking why is he downstairs sleeping that should be the church in the in the marketplace everybody else is panicking and we should show that calm because we walk by faith and not by sight. We have um, experienced what um, Jesus has done in our life. So even though we, uh, it may appear to be um, going against us, we know our faith tells us that um, we're victorious people. So that is how the church, um, because like Sister Bracken said, we are the church, it's not just a building. So we should always stand out because we'll always be calm in the midst of storm. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Um, the word resurrects. And I'm gonna end this lesson the way uh, we started it off. But more so than that, those questions, even if you, you know, you had a chance to take a look at them, uh, you think about and stuff, but ultimately we need to uh, just reflect on, on who is, what, who the Lord is and, and what God has done and what he's going to do. Uh, some examples, as we've already said, let's start there. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the light that might have life and I have life more abundantly. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I am the door, and I am the true vine. So as we understand that Jesus is the light, Jesus is, I am, once we know that and get that in our hearts, and as we've already said, and let that uh, reflect within our souls, then God will revive us, and God will resurrect us day after day. Because today, again, we're, we're living in a dying world and there are things that we must continue to do as outlined by scripture. And as we do what the word of God tells us, then we could 
uh, be able to carry the word out as ambassadors for Jesus Christ throughout the, throughout the ages and throughout the world. So with that being said, um, are there any questions, any other further questions, comments, chats, before I turn it over to the presiding minister that's on the line? I think that's everything. Oh, there's, um, there's one that got added to the chat and never forget that God is, I am, not I was or could have been. He is the I am forever. Amen. On that note, the, the, the presiding preacher on there, we got one on here that can put, close it out. If, if none of them are on, then Brother Butler, you can do it. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Reverend Bell is on. So, uh, Reverend Bell, you Why can you go ahead. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. What an awesome lesson. Let's give our superintendent, Brother Lot, a hand for an awesome, awesome lesson talking about the resurrection. The word resurrects. The word is all for all. And I, I appreciated uh, going back through and talking about the I am's. It's important to know who Jesus is, what he is to us, and that uh, that he, he overshadows everything. He can accomplish anything. I was at a, a function yesterday, uh, uh, a little picnic, and I saw the uh, shirt talking about cancer survivors and stuff. And it says the, uh, that the C in Christ is greater than the C in cancer. That he says, I am, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He told, he told Martha that, that her, her brother will rise again. And she said, I know he will rise. I, I don't know if she knew he was going to rise then and be brought out of the tomb, but he said, he will arise. And she had that belief and she had that faith. And, you know, we, we kind of sometimes give her a bad rap uh, for, for her situation with, uh, with her sister. And when she like, God, tell her to do some stuff. But you know what? She was one of those who I think like us is just outgoing. She said, look, I'm going to tell you what's on my heart. I'm going to speak and tell you what's on my mind. And when I put it out there, God can work with us and deal with us in that. And it's good to hear it and have that kind of confession. Uh, that's one of the things I'm finding out with this time in July and putting faith in action is that the hardest thing has been to be with myself. <laughs> that has been the most challenging thing. And then to remember that Jesus says, I am. Whatever you need, Jesus says, I am. You need healing, he says, I am. You need peace, he says, I am. You need faith, I am. You need comfort, you need direction, you need guidance, you need love, you need salvation. Jesus says to us today, I am. And what an awesome, awesome thing to remember. So I thank you so much for that, uh, Brother Lot. Thank you all for participating, for your questions, for your comments, for your chats, for your uh, raising your hand. We really appreciate it. And that really helps us with the lesson and helps us with that discussion and breaking uh, open the word and allowing the fragrance of God's word to come out and just um, you know, be pleasing aroma to us and also to the Lord himself. So thank you so, so much for that. Let us uh, bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that the word is all and in all, that the word resurrects, that the word heals, that the word saves, that the word delivers, that the word cleanses, Lord God. And you said that you are the resurrection. You are the truth. You are the life. You are the door. You are the bread of life, God. And we just need to remember, help us to remember that you are the I am in our lives, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in this world today, Lord God, as things are going all which way, just distorted, Lord God, help us maintain our faith. Help us maintain speaking forth a word that brings glory to your name. Help us be the, be the standard that you have set that others may come and see and say, what must I do to be saved? What can I do to have peace? What can I do to be stable in this unstable world? We thank you, Lord God, for those that participated. We thank you, Lord God, and just ask that your healing power be upon those who are grieving yet now. Those, Lord God, who are sick and shut in and cannot get out or participate, we ask that your anointing power be upon them. And Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for your peace, for your comfort, 
and everything, God, that you give us. We lift up our pastor and his family, Lord God, as they are uh, getting rest and relaxation, Lord God, and being being uh, refilled and stirred up in their spirit. We thank you for this day. And as we close out our Sunday school and move into our time of worship, we ask, Lord God, that we will be attentive to your spirit. Be open, Lord God, to hear from you and change that we may be more like you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.